What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Churchosity Podcast. If you're looking for the spot to discuss all things church culture as it relates through the lens of Gen Xers, well, guess what? You are in the right place. My name is Heath Brady. And I'm Andrea Brady. And we, back in the saddle again, remain your faithful Churchosity Podcast personnel. Coming at you. Coming at you <laughs> one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> That's right. It's good to be back again. I hope everyone had a nice Thanksgiving. Yes. Turkey Day. Yes. We had a very nice Thanksgiving. Yeah, I was just thinking about how wonderful our Thanksgiving was. Yeah. The food. Uh-huh. Food comas. <laughs> Trip to fan. <laughs> Fellowship. Fellowship. <laughs> you know. Playing with puppies. Yes. We had five dogs in our house mm-hmm. at one point mm-hmm. of various sizes and widths <laughs> Width. <laughs> and lengths <laughs> and temperaments. Yeah. And uh, the new puppy, little Oscar. Yes. Yeah. He, uh, he warmed up pretty well. Yeah. He did really great. Yeah. It took him a little while. Because, you know, he's small enough to be a bite-sized morsel for a couple of these other dogs. Because <laughs> we had Tucker and we had Rex. It's true. But yeah. uh, eventually, Oscar kind of realized that, hey, you know, I think, I, can get, I think I can get along with the big boys. Yeah, he was wrestling and running and playing. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Really, really cool. And we had pretty good weather, too, and it was really nice. We did. It yeah. was... It was pretty stellar as things go for the pacific northwest Mm -hmm. and holidays i think it was sunny with a high of like 53 yeah so it's not too shabby (laughs) not too shabby a little crisp and brisk in the morning right but you know nothing froze so i think it was good Mm -hmm. it was good to have the kids here too yeah it was absolutely great really really great you know you hear lots of comedians make jokes about awkward thanksgivings yeah. And family drama and, you know, things that just take away from the joy of holidays. And I kind of grew up with that. Yeah, same. And it, it just, it, it was really, really nice. I, I remember just kind of sitting, you know, Wednesday and Thursday and a little bit of Friday and just kind of meditating on just how peaceful and relaxing and loving and chill and funny uh, our time was yeah over the holiday. It was really great. Yeah, I was hoping it would just be really relaxing and laid back and fun, and it was. You know, we played a puzzle. We yep. haven't played a puzzle in a while, and uh, our girls love playing puzzles, so it was perfect timing. We had purchased one from Costco and brought it home and uh, started setting it up a little bit, got it started, and then when they came over, they were just totally engrossed Mm -hmm. and i was a stinker (laughs) what did you do did (laughs) Did you hide some of the pieces so they couldn't finish it i didn't say that no i would never hide pieces but i held on to one so i could be the last piece oh my god Well, see, Oscar had gotten a hold of one of the pieces, and we caught him chewing on it. That's true. Luckily, we got it before it was bad, because it still fit into the puzzle perfectly, and it's it's hardly noticeable. Is that the one you held on to? No, it was not. (sighs) After that... You got a different one? Yeah, of course. I'm not going to hold on to some slobbery piece. (laughs) (laughs) So, anyway... (laughs) So after we'd put it all, like I held on, I was holding on to it because it was getting down to the end, you know, and you get like 20 pieces left and you're like, oh man, here we go. It's the end. And uh, <laughs> mom has to win. I, You know, Audrey had just been talking about how she used to do that when she was little and Emma and her were arguing about that. And I'm just like, oh, I'm going to do it. And so I picked a piece and I held it in my hand and then. We got down to the last piece, or Audrey thought she did the last piece, and then Emma pointed out, oh no, there's another piece. Oh no. And then they started looking on the floor for it, and I swooped in and tapped it in, you know, and they were like, oh, mom. It was really cute. Did you eventually tell them what you had done? Yes, they noticed right away. Oh. And we all laughed really hard about it, too. That's funny. It was super cute. (laughs) Nice. Yep. 
You held on to the last piece. <laughs> That's right. Well, at least at least they were kind and patient with you. <laughs> I, I'm more I'm entertaining to them, I think. Yeah. But yeah, they were pretty kind. Isn't it kind of neat to be at the age and relationship stage with our kids where we're not weird to them anymore? Oh, I think we're still weird. Absolutely. You think so? Yeah, they've just learned to love be, us anyway. Be nice about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, there was definitely lots of laughter and good conversation, and it's a good time. Yeah, it was. I I hope that everybody else out there had a decent Thanksgiving or an awesome Thanksgiving. They those these holidays like this time of year, Thanksgiving, and now we're into the Christmas season. Like it's it's really a great time of year to reflect on the blessings that you that we have yeah. and the ways that God has been good and faithful to us. Mm-hmm. When our faith is gone, or it seems like there's not a whole lot to be happy about, and yet in those moments like Thanksgiving, you can sit there and look around the table and realize, you know, what matters is right here in front of me right now. Aww, that's and true. and I think I think that a lot of times we can be guilty. Here I am already sermonite getting sermonitis, <laughs> and we haven't even got into our topic. <laughs> But you know, I learned a really valuable lesson quite a while ago that at the holidays we tend to focus on who isn't there. Oh gosh, don't get me started. Right. And and we have stories about that kind of a scenario, but yeah. but we've really kind of gotten a hold of being thankful and focusing on who is there mm-hmm. and what's present. You know, being being present in the moment instead of the what ifs and the woe is me's. Right. And, and I think that, that if you can take the time to just kind of change your filter and shift your focus on what's right in front of you, even if it's just you, mm-hmm. just be thankful that you're, that you're vertical and that you're on this side of the grass. <laughs> I think we need to do a whole other episode on this topic. We probably should because I'm already drifting off ed- into the weeds. Yeah, special holiday edition. <laughs> yeah. Because I have a lot to say, too. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a good time. We had fun. It was, yeah. Well, I'm excited to get into the meat and potatoes of our episode, our topic for the week. Which is? Well, before we get into all of that, we need to remind everyone that if you want to support us here at Churchosity, it's really, really simple. The first thing you can do is whatever app it is that you're listening to us on right now, you can drop us a rating and you could even leave us a review. Because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, your ratings and your reviews not only help popularize churchosity, but also make us a heck of a lot easier for other people to find us. You could also follow us on the socials that we unfortunately belong to. That would be Facebook or Instagram. Look for us at the tag at churchosityPod. And if you really, really love this episode, and we're sure that you're going to, you can just simply share it with all of your friends. Once again, however it is that you're listening to this episode right now, click on whatever is possible to copy and share the link of this episode. Send it to your friends. Attach a little note. Say, hey, Keith and Andy, they're pretty awesome. Their show is awesome. We love them. Give them a chance, hang out with them for a while, because we're sure that you're going to love them just as much as we do, too. (laughs) I I know they will. I do, too, but I'm biased. (laughs) So, uh, one last piece of business. Yes. Uh, We already have our first Patreon supporter. Oh, yes. Yes. All right. That quickly. Way to go. And, and, And not only do we owe this person an infamous... Churchosity podcast t shirt. <laughs> but their names shall forever be echoing through the hallways and the byways <laughs> of Churchosity podcast henceforth. So we would like to send a big shout out to our very first Patreon supporter, who is. Drumroll. Jessica Arguin. Yay! Jessica. Jessica. Thank you. Our home girl. <laughs> Jessica's been a longtime listener and longtime supporter of our family and our podcast. And, and when we take our break, she's one of the first people that's like, I need some more. And, and we love Jessica and her family so much. And so we are just so 
appreciative and over the top thankful for your patronage. So, Jessica, your name, you can hear it echoing, can't you? Jessica, Jessica, Jessica. Jessica. Seriously, though, we thank you <laughs> from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you so much for supporting us. And along those lines, you too, if you haven't done so already, you too could have your name bellowing through the hallways of Churchosity Podcast and even get a hand, your hands on some Churchosity merch if you just simply, for the mere cost of a grande peppermint mocha every month. <laughs> Or even less. Or even less. They're pretty pricey these days, yes. You too could be a Patreon supporter of Churchosity Podcast and have mm-hmm. access to so many cool perks, like having your name uh, shout, shout, shouted out on an episode. We've got merch. We've got... Uh, early access to new episodes. Early access to new episodes. Mm-hmm. So guess what, Jessica? Uh, Saturday, you can listen to this episode. Yeah, instead and of having... And henceforth... You can listen on Saturdays instead of having to wait like everybody else until Monday. That's right. So we're pretty excited about that. And we got other stuff coming too. We got some live stream stuff. We got some live Q&A stuff. Uh, We may even be adding at some point a video element. We've been talking about it. To our podcast. Yeah. So look for that stuff in the not too distant future. Once again, Jessica, we love you. Thank you so much for supporting us. All right, Andy. Now on to the episode. We got our business handled. Do, 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 do. So let's continue in our conversation about the fruits. Fruit. Fruits. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're going to argue about this every week. <laughs> the fruits. The fruits of the devil. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. Yes, we've been looking at uh, our, our key text is in Galatians chapter 5 where mm-hmm. Paul gives a list of the fruits of the spirit and uh prior to that list he also gives a rather lengthy and heinous list of deeds of the flesh and he contrasts both of those and how uh there is this evident opposition between the flesh and the spirit that we in our humanity and our flesh in our desires to please ourselves we want to do our own thing and and kind of have control of the steering wheel of our lives and yet paul urges us to walk by the spirit to be led by the spirit and produce fruit with things like love joy peace patience kindness etc and remember last week we talked about how one of the major differences between a deed and a fruit Hmm. is that a deed is something that you do to get a result. Oh, that's right. Whereas fruit is something that is a result of watering and waiting and growing, which after all is what we like to call... Patience? The sanctification process. Oh! (laughs) Which does involve patience. (laughs) And you know what, Andy? Yeah. It's funny you should mention that. Because guess what we're going to talk about on this episode? Patience. Patience. It took a lot of patience for me to get to this point. Yes, and you've had lots of patience with me to get to this point as well. (laughs) But uh, so we, you know, we talked to great lengths about love. We talked to great lengths about joy. We talked at great lengths in our last episode about peace. And on this episode, we are going to discuss everybody's favorite, even more favorite than (laughs) peace. That would be... Patience. I think it's everyone's least favorite. Because everybody wants patience and they want it right now. Well, they want everyone to give them patience. They don't want to have to develop it. <laughs> Ooh, that'll be Because that's no fun. Yeah. Patience. It, what was it our grandparents used to Patience is a virtue. Right. A virtue of what? I, uh, of good character. Good character. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So patience is a virtue of good character. I think so. That's interesting. Yeah. Because you know what? What? I think the Apostle Paul said something along those very same lines. Did he? Yeah. You know what my favorite verses in the Bible are, besides John 11, 35? Um, I don't know what that is. Romans chapter 5. Oh, yes. Verses 3 through 5. Okay. Listen to these infamous words of the Apostle Paul. We can rejoice also in our tribulations, (laughs) knowing... That tribulation brings about perseverance. You know that word tribulation? 
Yes. That uh, that gets people a little hot under the collar. They had that word and they're like, oh, tribulation. It's just a fancy word for great testing. Yeah. And what tests us more, tests our patience more than anything, but trials and tribulations, mm. right? Yeah. But Paul says that not only this, we can also exalt in our tribulations knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. Perseverance is a fancy word for patience. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it involves long suffering. <laughs> Something we all want. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us suffer longer than others, don't they? <laughs> I don't mean to be sarcastic, but it's hard to become patient sometimes. I know. I mean, I appreciate the patience that I've developed at this point in my life, but it was hard to get here. <laughs> Especially being married to me. Hey! I wasn't really thinking that. But oh, I'm sorry. Gee, now that you mention it, not really. That's Uh-oh, break not, out the list. <laughs> that's not really what I was thinking at all. But, you know, as a mother, as a doggy mother, mm. as a, you know, we've been through the ringer here and there in yep. our lives, and it's developed a lot of patience. Right. Paul continues, yes, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, mm. and proven character, hope. Now see, here hope. in Romans 5, Paul gives another list mm-hmm. of qualities, of virtues, and they all feed into the next one. That's cool. Just like in Galatians 5, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But catch this. What? Hope does not disappoint, Romans 5, verse 5. So we've we've got our tribulations and we can rejoice in them because they bring about perseverance or long suffering or patience. Mm-hmm. Patience develops proven character. Proven character develops hope. And the hope does not disappoint because the love of God, here's the hope. The love of God has been poured out within our hearts. Not just sprinkled, not just dabbled. <laughs> Not just a little sample, but literally poured Poured out, out overflowing Mm. into our hearts through the Holy Spirit Mm. who was given to us. Now, these fruits that we're talking about, they're the fruits of what? Of the Spirit. The Spirit. Right. And here Paul says that because of the love that God has poured out into our hearts, that is through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. Mm. And it's just, it's always fascinating to me how simple Christianity is, but how difficult Christians make it. That's true. Because we have this, you know, silly little thing called the flesh that just gets in the way of everything that, you know, is is good and perfect for us. Exactly. And patience, man, because we want, (laughs) we, this is why Starbucks has a drive-thru because we want our coffee and we want it now and we don't want to get out of our car. Yeah. You know, this this is why people drive over the speed limit. This is I mean, and mm. and and I'm being a little facetious, but but my point is is that especially in 2023, like we literally have become the fast food culture where we just want what we want and we want it now and and because we just don't have time or patience or patience yeah, right it's so true and like now we've officially entered into the christmas season yeah we oh had gosh. black friday and as is tradition in our family mm-hmm. we don't go black friday shopping oh man but there was a time when we did true and just to be out there in all of that hustle and bustle of people climbing over each other and grabbing things out of each other's hands and trying arguing to get the last and, oh, tickle man. me elmo <laughs> yeah the last tickle me elmo <laughs> but that's you going back that. well i mean you know we're the gen x take here that's true like like we've officially entered into that season where patience uh is lacking yeah that's so true <laughs> if you will yeah but paul has this quality this fruit on a list and he has it in a in kind of a provocative spot on the list Hmm. so back in galatians chapter 5 starting in verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love Mm -hmm. that's the first one that agape right that love that has no strings attached for others and love feeds into joy and joy feeds into peace 
And peace develops patience. Hmm. Without peace, and remember what we said peace was. Peace was not the absence of conflict, but rather... Persevering through it? Being, yeah, being preserved through the yeah. conflict. Having that peace in your mind and peace in your heart that God's got you. Mm. So if you have unconditional, no strings attached love in your heart, that produces joy. And the joy of the Lord becomes your strength in the midst of troubles, right. which gives you peace of mind and mm -hmm. peace of heart. Mm -hmm. And because you are in a state of being at peace, that cultivates and develops the fruit of patience. Yeah. The ability to have long suffering. Exactly. Mm. Because, I mean, how, how easy is it to suffer or endure hardship when you don't have peace of mind? Oh, it's impossible, practically. It's virtually impossible. Yeah. And that's where you, you fall into the trap of finding other ways to try and pacify some like artificial form of peace of mind. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, binge watching, you know, several hours of shows or <laughs> stuffing your face with a third helping of Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, dear. Or a fourth slice of pumpkin pie. Or you know, I'm not speaking from experience. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just, oh, right. okay. <laughs> but, but I'm just saying like, um, you know, whatever that thing might be where, where things just like, like they, they become as if they're unbearable Yeah. and you gotta, you gotta escape uh -huh. or self-medicate. Self-med. Yeah. Yeah. Those are those artificial forms of peace. Those mm -hmm. things that we in the flesh will use or try or do or be to pacify this false sense of peace of mind, but yet it doesn't lead to patience. Mm -hmm. The true fr fruit of the spirit, which is patience yeah. or endurance or long suffering. So in the moment, if you recognize that you're trying to create a false sense of peace for yourself, what do you think you should be doing instead? Well, if you're trying to create, this is just my opinion. Uh -huh. If you're trying to create a false sense of peace, then ask yourself, do I have joy? You got to work backwards. Work backwards. Okay. So it's, it's just kind of like, kind of like when you're troubleshooting a furnace that's not working. <laughs> okay. Well, I need this to activate to get this. Well, uh -huh. this isn't activating. So I got to work backwards. It's yeah. like looking at a schematic. Or why won't the car start, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah. And it's not always the solenoid. Is it the gas? Uh, did I, you know, is it the we... battery? Okay. You know, whatever it might be. And mm -hmm. so when you figure out what the problem is, you don't just replace what's broken. You have to figure out what broke it. Right. And you work your way backwards. So the short answer haha, to your question, Andy, <laughs> right. is that if I don't have peace of mind or peace in my heart, mm -hmm. And in the moment, I catch myself going, I got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. And the anxiety, you know, the whatever it might be, kicks in. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, the peace in my life is broken. I identify it. So now I work backwards. What caused the peace of mind to break? Do I not have joy? Hmm. Well, let's see. If I don't have joy, then do I have love? Hmm. And more often than not, because we are human and it's 2023 and we live in the United States of America and everything is fast paced and everything is, is self motivated, that we don't think of others first as, as kind of a natural habit, if you will. Right. And chances are that if any of these fruits that we talk about are broken or broken down or lacking, I dare say that we could probably go all the way back to the beginning we might end up going back to the beginning of the list and saying, do I have unconditional, no strings attached love for others in my heart? Mm. You know, not always the case, but True. I would say that most often it probably is the case. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, if our flesh is at war with us all the time, then we could even go back further in Galatians 5 and look at the deeds of the flesh Ooh. and see if we're guilty of any of those things. Yeah, it's kind of hard to have outbursts of anger and be full of joy. That's true. Well, I guess, yeah, if you're not, if you don't have the, if you're not displaying the fruit of the spirit, then some of these other things might come out. 
True. And and you bring up a really interesting point, and I'm glad that you went there, Andy. What? Because there's a very important message, a very important lesson that we should stop and learn real quick. What is it? About this about this chapter. Okay. Specifically in the Greek, which is the original language of this text. Mm-hmm. When you look at the the deeds of the flesh, the, the the list that Paul gives, you know, immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, etc. And also when you look at the list of the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, etc. These aren't feelings. These aren't experiences. These aren't qualities that he's talking about. Right. He's literally talking about these the in, in in the voice and tense that Paul uses here in the Greek. It's like a label. They're habitual. Hmm. So do you, so because I think that a lot of times this this could be one of those passages of scripture. And, and, and I'm sorry, folks, but we, we do like to bring up church hurt on our show from time to time. Mm. And, and I do believe that this is one of those passages of scripture that Christian Christians, specifically Christians in positions of authority or leadership in our churches, may use to whip on people. Oh, yeah. Because if I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, am I always going to get the fruits of the Spirit right well, no, we're human. We're human. There's on only this one side ex- of eternity, we're going to fail. Exactly. There's only one person ever in the history of humanity that is the perfect example of this, and that's Jesus, right? Right. So while we're saved and walking in the Spirit, are there ever going to be times where we're jealous? Yeah. Are there ever going to be times where we lose our temper? Yeah. Are there ever going to be times where we have a little too much to drink? Maybe. Are there ever going to be times where we envy? Yeah. Or or intentionally or unintentionally cause division or factions? Well, some of us might do that. But I mean, see, I try not to do that. Well, I'm yeah. not pointing the finger at okay. you. I'm just saying we collectively as the local body of believers. I'm going to say that some of these things might make you giddy. Yes. <laughs> and when you're giddy, it's a little sinful, baby. <laughs> sure. But but my point is, but yeah, is that remember as I said, in in the voice and tense of the Greek language that Paul is using here, these are habitual. Mm. So that's important that's a very important thing to understand. That like and I always like to to call out outbursts of anger or fits of rage literally. Uh, on the list of the deeds of the flesh because that is a person who literally has no control of their emotions okay. specifically anger uh-huh. like it is a habitual thing okay. right and I'm sure that all of us who are listening right now can think of at least one person who isn't a believer or follower of Jesus Christ that fits into this category of just being mm. ruled by their anger all of the time yeah. to where they just lose their mind over nothing, right? I would imagine a lot of those kinds of uh, people end up, you know, in trouble with the law and stuff. Sure. Too. Yeah. But it's, but my point is, is that these are habitual. These are things that it's almost like you would be wearing uh, some sort of a banner or sash across your chest that says, I am idolatry. I mm. am strife. I am jealousy. I am fits of rage. Right, okay. But on the contrary, mm-hmm. Paul says to walk in the Spirit because those fruits are the habitual agape love, mm-hmm. habitual joy, habitual peace, etc. Mm-hmm. So do, do, do you catch what I'm getting at there? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Just because you are a follower of Jesus Christ does not mean that you are never going to to slip up and get this wrong. And it also doesn't mean that you fall out of grace with God because of it. Mm -hmm. What it means is as, and I'm, and, and this came to mind because you asked the question, what if, what if in the moment I notice that I don't have peace in my heart or my mind, what should I do? You work backwards on the list, right? 
And if I go all the way back and say, oh my gosh, I, I am not acting unlovingly. Like if I go all the way back to the beginning and I don't have agape love in my heart because I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about myself. Right. That doesn't mean that you have fallen out of God's grace. Okay. But rather it is because of God's grace that the Holy Spirit is pointing that out to you. Oh, amen. Yeah, that's because that's true. one of the many jobs that the Holy Spirit has yeah. is to peel away the layer of the onion, to pull back the curtain and say, here's what your heart looks like. And, and, maybe, then, and maybe this is why you don't feel in close proximity to God right now. And then you can thank him for that. Exactly. Like the verse, the verses that we read uh, last week in Philippians that um, that to not be anxious for anything. Uh, but with thanksgiving in our hearts, make our requests be known to God. Yeah. That's, that's something that we have thanksgiving over and we mm. just celebrated Thanksgiving. <laughs> wow. I sense a theme here. Aww. So isn't that, isn't that just such good news yeah, that it is. we don't have to worry about being right 100% of the time. And we also don't need to be worried about whether or not the Holy Spirit is going to do his job when we cut out a line with these fruits of the spirit because he'll point them out to us and not in a guilt or shaming way but as a hey look at this this is what's the matter Uh huh. and to me that's like him pointing out hey you need me exactly <laughs> and i'm like yeah i do <laughs> yeah and i just i just think that that is super duper cool yeah i do too so we have this unconditional love, mm-hmm. this, this, this no strings attached love, which produces joy. Right. The joy of the Lord becomes our strength, which produces peace of mind and peace in our hearts. Mm-hmm. And the peace, the peace of God, which surpasses all human wisdom, knowledge, or understanding or comprehension, produces patience. Wow. Even and especially in the midst of our problems and our trials. Hmm... And I just love that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we as Christians know, and I don't mean to keep harping on this, but I think that this is like a primary issue in most of our local church lives in the midst of troubles and trials and tribulations with other believers, Uh, you know, being out of fellowship because there's drama or problems or dissensions or whatever, like all those things, right? Yeah. Like, how do you get through? How do you, how do you, uh, you know, not, how do you just not give up or lose your mind? Yeah. How do you navigate that? Exactly. Mm. And sometimes, you know, like my old, my old pastor and good friend, Mark Barrett used to say, it's not just take two Psalms and call me in the morning. (laughs) You know, I do like that though. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I like the Psalms. Yeah, yeah. But there are some days where it's like, yeah, I need a little more than that. (laughs) Don't ever underestimate the Psalms, my dear. I'm not saying that. (laughs) But can you ever have too much scripture? No. Can you ever have too much God's word in your heart? Mm -mm. Yeah. Never. And we just come out of this season of, you and I just come out of the season of just some really tough stuff. Yeah. Haven't we? Mm-hmm. It's been really, really hard. And, you know, every day for me when it just seemed like it was getting worse and there was no end in sight to it, yeah, it, it just seemed like the only thing that was getting me through was knowing that God's got me. Mm-hmm. And... You know, and there were days where I even doubted that. There were days where, <laughs> like, I was quoting from the Psalms. You know, how long, O oh Lord, will you allow the wicked to prosper? <laughs> <laughs> right. I think it's Psalm or... <laughs> 19. Vindicate me, on, O oh Lord, for your name's sake. <laughs> Squash out your enemies. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, it's hard, isn't it? It's really hard. Yeah. And and yet, well, waiting on the Lord can be hard. Yeah, but waiting, that's that patience, right? Waiting for God's perfect timing. Yeah. Waiting for Him. That's that, but that's that patience. Yeah, that's that long suffering. That's that endurance, yeah. and that it's developing good character. Mm-hmm. Like, if I sometimes like to think of the fruits of the Spirit as different muscles. 
yeah. that have to be developed and trained uh -huh. and stretched yeah. in order to perform mm -hmm. and uh, not break as, as often or as badly. Yeah. And, you know, what... In, 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 a lot of, in a lot of different types of training or sports or whatever, you have, you have these certain drills or certain stretches or certain activities that you do that, that break down the muscle to build it up stronger. Yeah. And, and I think about that whole concept whenever I think about this fruit of patience or perseverance. Hmm. That, you know, what better way to... Um, stretch and strengthen and build up the fruit of patience than to have it stretched or tested mm -hmm. by problems and trials. Yeah, that's true. I mean, think about it, Andy. Can you think of any better way to discern whether or not you have the patience, the fruit of the spirit, which is patience, than to, you know, be faced with some sort of a trial? Or That's tribulation. True. That's true. I mean, if life was honky dory all the time, you know, we'd have probably this false sense of security. Oh yeah, everything's great. We'd be I'm hashtag blessed. <laughs> Ain't no trouble coming my way. The Lord hath found favor in me. Oh yeah. And then whammo, something bad happens. <laughs> oh. Well, I think the wisdom that you gain is when you're experiencing some kind of trial that mm -hmm. you can look at it through the eternal perspective, through that lens piece and think, okay, I need, this is my patience now. I need, I need Christ. I need to, you know, work backwards here. Can I do this? I can only do this through him. So, you know, start praying. Yeah. One of the things that I love about the character of God, I mean, besides the fact that he's omniscient and knows everything anyway, like he knows our heart. He knows the end from the beginning. He, he knew and ordained the events of today long before we woke up this morning. <laughs> and yet he, he knows what we're facing. He knows what we're going to face and he knows that we need him. Mm hmm and I just love the fact that he never leaves us and he never forsakes us. Oh, I am thankful for that. And just as a side note, hmm. there is no verse in the Bible that says that God will never give us more than we can handle. <laughs> Okay. Well, I know what verse I, I know what verse that is being misappropriated and misused. Okay. It's the verse that says that God is faithful and will never allow us to be tempted beyond what we can handle, but will always be faithful and provide for us a way out. That's right. That's a whole different conversation. <laughs> I would argue that sometimes God allows things in our lives for us to experience that are more than we can handle so that our faith can be stretched and our need for him can be escalated. Hmm. Because just like I was saying that like there's certain activities and stretches and, and, and things that you do for training purposes that break down muscle groups to build them up stronger. Yeah. Well, a situation that I can't handle, like I literally have to turn the whole thing over to God. Mm -hmm. Make my requests be made known to God and allow the peace that is beyond all human wisdom or comprehension will guard my heart and mind. So it isn't, it isn't like, Oh, life is too much for me. I can't handle it. Woe is me. What am I going to do? It's more of, Lord, I have no idea why I'm in this thing. I have no idea why you're allowing this thing. I got nothing. Right. So I'm turning it over to you. Mm -hmm. And those are two very different conversations, hmm. both of which involved something in our lives, a situation in our lives that we cannot handle. Mm -hmm. And so we're more or less forced or driven or compelled and hopefully it gets easier and easier as life experience goes by to take that situation, that struggle, that trial, that tribulation and turn it over to God. 
Right. I would argue the sooner the better. Yeah. That's where wisdom comes into play. Exactly. And that's why I love the metaphor of fruit that Paul uses because it's cultivated over time. Yeah. We don't arrive immediately. (laughs) When we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ for our salvation, we are given the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's part of that salvation transaction that takes place. We are filled with the Holy Spirit the moment that we receive salvation. But these fruits are cultivated over time. Hmm. Sanctification is a process. That's true. It is. And trials and tribulations in our lives, as Paul says in Romans 5, we can rejoice when these things happen because we know that they're good for us. They help us learn to be patient. Helps us grow fruit. Helps us grow fruit. (laughs) It's like fertilizer. And just like I said last week, (laughs) just like fertilizer... Which is a very <laughs> family-friendly way of describing some of our problems and tribulations, Beautiful, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Just like fertilizer. <laughs> it's like my old pastor and good friend Mark Barrett used to say, this too shall pass, even if it feels like a kidney stone. Mm, right. But just think about what's waiting for us on the other end of the trial and tribulation. Like, not only is... not only will our patience be strengthened after being stretched but the next fruit is waiting for us right oh man which we're not going to talk about until next episode right yeah i know but just remember remember this progression it starts with love if you can't if if you're listening right now and you just you can't put your finger on where, where are things not adding up? Where are things not lining up? Like, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, but like I just, it, it, things aren't making sense to me right now. Go back to the very beginning. Don't forget your first love. Don't forget your first love. Mm-hmm. Church of Ephesus. They were great at rooting out false doctrine. They were great at calling out false teachers, but they had forgotten why they had been, why they had been called to be a church in the first place, and that was to produce love. Mm. amongst each other and even spill over to outside of the church and I think that you know in the context especially of conflicts and trials and tribulations with fellow church members with other Christian family members whatever it might be Mm -hmm. like we love these verses in Colossians 3 so much and and I like I should commit these to memory but my brain is old and I can't Thank God for the internet. Oh, you can. We used to work at it a little I bit. guess I have to work at it. And not as easy as it was when we were little. Like my sanctification, I got to work at scripture memorization, <laughs> I guess. Huh? Yeah. Colossians chapter 3, mm-hmm. starting in verse 12. So, as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Oh. Bearing with one another. How can you bear one another's burdens if you don't have patience? Oh, yeah, we can't. Right. He says, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Mm -hmm. Well, how can we be forgiving if we don't have patience? Right. Think about the level of patience that God has with us. (laughs) He has a lot of patience. Yeah. Yeah. Every day that the Lord allows me <laughs> to get up and breathe is so much grace <laughs> because his patience with mm. me could run out at any moment, right? Mm. But Paul says, bearing with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against you, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. In verse 14, but beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Hmm. Verse 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Gosh, you know, this is in Colossians, (laughs) and it sounds a lot like Galatians, right? I think Paul just kind of had this, like, one-track mind when it came to the fruits of the Spirit, because they're in all his letters in one way, shape, or form. That's true. But, you know, Andy, we always ask the question, like, what does that look like? Where do we start? How do we, how do we 
get better at this? Yeah. What's the key? Right, because we're application Christians, right? Yeah, like, like it's we important. like we can memorize scripture verses and we can talk about principles and guidelines and formulas and metaphors and analogies and tell stories and laugh and joke and everything. But at the end of the day, I'm like everybody else. Lord, what does that look like? Where do I start? Right. Colossians three verse sixteen. Hmm. Let the words of Christ ah. richly dwell within you. It always goes back to that. Always comes back to that. It always comes back to get your nose in the book. Yep. Keep on being filled. Yep. That's in Ephesians. Yeah. To keep on continuously being filled with the Spirit. It's the same thing. Yeah. We talk about that all of the time. Right. So here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Do you want to be more patient? Do you you want to develop the muscle of patience? (laughs) Well, we're all going to be there at some point. Right. Well, we won't well, we won't be perfectly patient until we pretty much don't need it anymore. Right. <laughs> you know, there I know there are days where just the idea the mere idea of patience is like, "Oh my gosh, why did Paul have to put that on the list?" Yeah. Like, can I just be good to people? <laughs> There's well, always a joke at church. Don't ever pray for patience. Right? (laughs) Be careful what you ask (laughs) for. Exactly. Because, yeah, God's going to be in the business of answering that prayer at some point. Right. (laughs) Like, can't I just have self control? (sighs) Can't I just be good? Yeah. Well, how good is good enough? And by whose standard? (laughs) Right? Ironically, self controls at the end of the list. (laughs) I know. And we're going to have a fun conversation when we get there. Right. So as I, as I asked, ladies and gentlemen, mm. how many of us would love to develop the muscle of patience, to develop the, the practice of patience, to develop the state of being patient? It starts with love. Yeah. It starts with love that brings about joy, that brings about peace, that cultivates patience through the storms and the trials and tribulations of our lives. Hmm. Because I'm telling you, and we're going to talk about this a lot on our next episode, but there is no way on God's green earth that you are ever going to be authentically kind the way that God is kind to another human being on Hmm. this planet until we learn first how to be patient. Wow. And that's all we have to say about that. Thank you for tuning in once again to another episode of the Churchosity Podcast, the show where we try to give you the Gen X take on church culture. And thank you once again, as always, to my amazing wife and phenomenal co-host. Oh, you're very welcome. Be sure to follow us on all the socials. That's Facebook and Instagram. Our tag is at Churchosity Pod. Drop us a message and give us your feedback because we would really love to hear from you. And just like Jessica arguing, you too should become a Churchosity Patreon supporter. For the mere cost of a grande peppermint mocha, you too can support us and receive cool perks like early access to new episodes and so much more. Don't forget to spread the word about Churchosity Podcast. Be sure to tell a friend to tell a friend what we're doing here yeah let them be a part of the conversation too but always remember that the goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith so we thank each and every one of you again for listening and we look forward to catching you all on the next episode of churchosity podcast peace peace